stop before I get removed from YouTube. <laughs> Is that what happens? They just well, kick you, you off about, YouTube? I don't know. Five to seven seconds and you're okay. And then if they don't want it, I mean, a lot of videos they'll let stay, but sometimes I've had many videos get blocked because I don't know. It's a mystery. It is a mystery. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Who knows? The YouTube gods, sometimes they smile, smile on you. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. they do not. Hey guys, thanks for being here. We're doing a acoustic guitar workshop for you. I'm Dan Dinley, founder of GuitarZoom.com, and this is my good friend Steve Stein, chief guitarist in residence. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here, guys, and uh, thank you for spending some time with us today to learn some acoustic guitar. If you yes. want to learn acoustic guitar, keep watching. If you want to learn even faster, you can go to GuitarZoom.com and check out Steve's new acoustic guitar course. It's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. <laughs> it's great. So today, guys, we're going to be talking about jamming on a single string. Jamming All with right? a single string. Jamming with a single string. I knew something didn't quite sound right about that. It's like just one string, jam on that one string all the way up and down the neck. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. So how do we jam uh, with a single string? Well, a lot of times what people do is that they'll make backing tracks, right? Or they'll, they'll, they'll have backing tracks, which are wonderful. But what you can do is you can just use a single string, for instance, as your, uh, as your pitch of relation to try and explore a scale or a chord or a chord progression or whatever it might be. So let's say, for instance, um, I was using, E is a really good one to use because it's kind of out of the way. So if I pluck this E string, Okay. What I can then do is use the rest of my fretboard to try and practice whatever it is that I want to work on. Let's say I'm just doing E minor pentatonic, right? So oftentimes we'd know E minor pentatonic at the 12th fret. We'd know 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, and 12, 15, two times there. So what we could do is we could pluck this string and then just practice. I'm going to skip the, the sixth string, obviously, because it's ringing out. If I know other positions, of course, I could practice some of those and just let that ring out. Now, the beauty of this single note is that it's not a chord, so it doesn't have a major or minor tonality. So I could go back and go, okay, well, I would rather practice E major pentatonic. So. Or blues. You know, whatever it is that you'd like to practice, you can just use that one single string and let it ring out and then practice whatever. You don't have the parameters of chords, multiple chords. You don't have the parameter of a major or minor tonality. You don't have the parameter of a tempo. All of these things are gone. And I'm not saying those are bad. Of course, we want to use those. But sometimes, like when you're trying to develop a scale or you're trying to learn all the positions on your guitar or whatever it might be, sometimes we don't explore enough of how it actually sounds on the fretboard in this way what we can do is we can take that note and just play that you know if i wanted to try a major scale for instance i could try and listen and go okay well you know i could listen to my arpeggios major seventh if you know what that is or the sixth or whatever the note might be right but the beauty of it is is that you're just listening to that one string and then you're practicing and I do this a ton where hmm. 10 years ago I never did it at all because it, it never was part of my thought process now it's very much a part of my practice schedule that is super cool so Tell, walk us through exactly what you're doing in terms of like, uh, you know, I was watching your right hand there. It seems like you would have to be really careful that you don't accidentally mute that string that's ringing out. Well, yeah, I mean, I want it to ring. If it stops, I'll just pick it again. You know, I, I again, what I'm not really concerned about at this point is certain techniques. 
um, you know, I just want that note to ring out and, and I just want to explore whatever it is I'm exploring. Let's say it was a single string like we were just talking about, right? So if I was just exploring maybe my second string. And I could just play on that second string playing E major or E minor. Right, whatever it might be. Or whatever scale it is I want to try and work on. Um, or I might work on a, you know, a certain position. Maybe you're learning a certain position on the guitar. Um, now, I'm, again, I'm relating everything to E, obviously, because I'm using that E as my open. You know, I could use A or D or something else, but E is nice is cause, for me because it gives you five strings to just kind of leave, you know, open to explore. So if I was playing and I um, did, let's say I was going to try and work on Dorian. So Dorian for me means I'm playing natural minor, but I've got this raised sixth note. And it's not just a matter of just playing through the scale shapes like you might have done before. What I really want to focus on is how do they all sound? With that raised six, right? That note right there. If I wanted to compare that to, say, Phrygian, well, Phrygian would use the flatted two and the minor sixth. So I can listen to those and explore them or listen to the differences between them. I mean, there's just a million things that you could do, or you might not even use scales themselves. You might just use chords. Like you might just be exploring something where you're going to play uh, right? And you're just exploring different sounds. So now maybe you're not concentrating on Ionian or major or what are all these things you're just exploring sounds and You're like, okay, well, what's my next chord gonna be well logically we try to move shapes around you go, Well, I like that or I don't like that or what don't I like about it, but the point is is it's giving you a platform to explore your creativity and your understanding of a particular topic instead of immediately applying all these parameters of, well, I got to have five chords and it's got to be in this key and it's got to be 120 beats a minute and blah, blah, blah. Because as soon as you do all that, now all of a sudden you find yourself in a, in a block, right? Where now you've got to move at a certain speed, you've got a certain groove that you have to apply, you've got core changes that are happening, so you're trying to kind of think about those. And all of that is important. Don't get me wrong, it's all important. But every once in a while, it's nice to just kind of shut all of that down and just explore a, a, an idea or multiple ideas or whatever it might be. But instead of giving yourself all of those parameters to kind of lock you in, you kind of erase all those parameters and then just kind of look at whatever it is and, and see what it, what it looks like and what most importantly, what it sounds like. Dude, that is super cool. It's yeah. such a nice sound. So you can do that with the E, uh, open E, and you did you show us that on A as well? Well, A, I mean, again, I could go to A now and then play whatever it might be. Maybe I want to practice A major or something like that. It's just now I only have four strings I can work with, so it's getting smaller and smaller as I go. Okay. Right? I might practice something where I'm moving between E and A. Like, I might go... Mm-hmm. 
you know, and I can listen to the different sounds. Or chords, you know, I might think E, and then A. And just practice different kinds of things. So it's just a it's just another way of trying to practice some of the things that you're studying. Bro, that is super super cool. What do you call that again? That technique? Just it, it's just I don't really have a name for it. It's just <laughs> taking a single note and practicing to that single note, you know, okay. or a single string, you know, just yeah. I should make up a name for it. Yeah, you usually have all these catchy little names. Yeah, just you know, it's it's a single note jam is what it is really. There you go. But yeah, I should come up with a, a catchy name to it. But really, it's just it's just a really cool idea to try and practice because I used to, you know, people always ask me about like looper pedals and all those kind of things to practice. And I think they're all really great. And I think there's a place for everything. But one thing that I didn't spend a lot of time with when I was younger was exploring what things sounded like. I was on such a mission from a technical perspective because of the kind of music I listened to and the players I played with um, that... I, I didn't really explore my fretboard from that perspective. And now it's something that I really enjoy doing just as practice. Just, just sometimes I'm not in the mood for technique. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for just sitting. And sometimes I am. I, but my point is, is that, you know, instead of beating yourself up about practice, like, well, today my, my technique sucked and I suck as a guitar player. Well, sometimes you're just intuitive and you go, okay, my technique isn't going the way it should be today. So today might be a great day to practice creativity or study some element that I know is beneficial for me in the long run, or whatever the case may be. And then tomorrow, maybe you'll have a really awesome technique day, and you can go through all your chops and everything like that. But you can go back and forth between these. So I've learned to be a bit more intuitive with myself instead of just beating myself up because I'm having a bad day. Yeah, that's stellar advice, bro. Um, see, we got a question here coming in. What, how do you know what notes to play? underneath like how do you know what notes to play like well you, you thinking have to know scales your, and stuff yeah, i mean you'd have to know you'd have to know your theory or maybe you don't know any of your theory but you, you have to know something about something like if you're plucking the note e you'd have to know well am i going to try and play e minor pentatonic or am i going to play e major pentatonic or am i going to play okay. e aeolian or am i going to play you know e major or i mean you'd you'd have to have some semblance of you'd have to learn something about your scales or your chords or whatever it might be to practice with that. Um, you know, if you're a beginning student and you don't know anything about scales, you'd have to learn a scale before you'd ever worry about something like this because you can't apply what you don't know. Got it. So, yeah, I think that was really the question. It's like, well, how does he know what notes he's to be playing there? And the answer is, I mean, I happen to know because I'm a theory nerd, but He's mixing all those different scales. He was just mentioning Dorian, E Dorian, E Phrygian. If you know, if the if the bass note's E, everything's to be E centric. So it could be E Dorian, E Phrygian, E major, E minor, right. any of that, right. right? And for a lot of guitar players, you know, you might be used to, you know, thinking E at the twelfth fret because it's on your sixth string, right? So you play your pentatonic or you play your natural minor or whatever it might be on 12th fret because that's where your E is. Well, all I'm doing is I'm just going to the, the fifth string E and I'm replicating those ideas on the fifth string right. because I'm letting the sixth string ring out. So I'm just going to the fifth string and playing E minor, you know, or whatever, or E minor pentatonic. But I, you know, I, I know where those are and I know what the notes are for each one of those, so. Yes. So guys, if, um, if you're sitting there thinking, I want to do that, then you might want to check out Steve's course. It's called Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. Uh, <laughs> I love these names. <laughs> what should we call this course? Well, what's it about, Acoustic Guitar? Let's call it Acoustic Guitar by Steve Stein. <laughs> it's available at guitarzoom.com. Uh, and if you want to learn all those scales and everything, guys, I'm, he does go through some of the scales in the uh, course but if you want to know all of those different modes and all of that thing, 
there's a couple of options for you that I'm thinking of. One would be uh, Ultimate Fretboard Connection. That's Ultimate Fretboard Connection. That's, I think it's our best-selling course of all time. It's helped literally tens of thousands of people. Um, and that is actually the diatonic scale and the pentatonic scale put together and all those patterns laid out for you across the fretboard and how they connect like Legos. Um, and that's also a guitar zoom. And of course, uh, the acoustic guitar course is all about acoustic and um, I think you'll enjoy it. What else would you like to teach us, sir? Because well, this is a beautiful and fun to listen to. Yeah, and again, I think that's enough. It's just, it's just introducing another idea, another way to practice. Um, another thing to think about, because if if there's people out there like me that, you know, you get used to just practicing scales or whatever it might be over and over and over with a metronome. And, and again, I'm not saying any of that is bad. It's all wonderful. You know, I've done it a million times. But the one thing that I didn't spend a lot of time with, if I could go back and change, it certainly would be spending more time exploring the fretboard as one entity and getting used to listening to what they, the notes actually sound like, not just these are the notes of a major scale, but actually listening to you know, listening to what things actually sound like is really important. Because people are always asking, well, you know, do you only land on the root or do you only land on the triad, right? The arpeggio. And, uh, you know, are those the notes that you try and emphasize? And the truth is that you can emphasize anything. It's just, that's the language of music is trying to learn how to set things up. So the ear goes. And sometimes it doesn't have to resolve. You might go. And that major seventh will just sit there. And then there I'm resolving to the sixth. And it's okay. It's okay that it's not going to a root or a third or a fifth. So it doesn't always have to do that. But the problem is, is if you never spend any time actually trying to formulate this, you just get... And it just, it just doesn't sound like anything. It's just, it just sounds random. And again, I'm not saying that that's bad, but if you're playing that way and you're like, I wish I had some more flow to what I'm doing, that this is a great way of practicing that really listening and learning how to push your movements towards certain notes, whether you know that they're called a fifth or a sixth or a seventh or whatever is fine, but it's really learning how to hear them. sort of practice so so beautiful to listen to guys if you're sitting there and you're like man i really would like to do that um let me just put something in context for you steve stein has been playing guitar for i think around 35 years yeah it's been somewhere around there and to give you some context not only he's been playing for 35 years he's been teaching for approaching i, I suppose like 30 right? yeah i started teaching five years after i started playing yeah. And then actually jamming and touring with other musicians in an yeah. actual band. Years. Almost 15, 20 years. Yeah. Across the US, across the UK. He's done recordings, um, session stuff. He's done, it, give him an idea. I, I think people don't really fully comprehend uh, practice time. So, you know, I've talked about this before, but I think it'd be interesting to share with everybody. Give people an idea of in your early days, uh, the amount of practice that you were doing. Oh, there were times that I would practice. I mean, even now I still practice, you know, a minimum of a couple hours a day. Um, and that's on a bad day. But back in the day, I mean, I would practice six, seven, eight, ten hours a day. I mean, it just, it was just, it consumed my life, you know, 
and it wasn't just practicing. I mean, that included rehearsing, performing, you know, it was just, it was an all encompassing kind of lifestyle where it was just, it was guitar from the moment I woke up to the time I went to bed. And, um, you know, so it wasn't all just 10 hours of technique practice. It was all kinds of different things, you know, um, but that's, you know, my guitar, my, my life has always been about playing guitar, whether it's performing, whether it's writing, whether it's recording, whether it's practicing scales or techniques or, I mean, it's just something in there and it's, it's a great life. I mean, it's a, it's a really fun thing to do, but when you, pro, when you, when you're, when you're in the industry like that and you're, you're playing all the time, sometimes it's easy to forget the simple things that are really fun, right? Because you're so busy having a career doing this that you forget that some of the thing, and again, don't get, don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't have fun. I have fun all the time. But what I was trying to remind people is that guitar playing, you still have to find a way of, of making it f make you feel good. And if you can find a way of making it make you feel good and make other people feel good at the same time, it's kind of a win-win, you know? Yeah. And I, I always say, uh, the more, you know, the better you are, the more fun it is to play. So like, just, it's really no fun to grab your guitar and just kind of get stuck in a rut, stuck in a song, stuck in a scale pattern. Like, if you don't see yourself getting better and one of the easiest ways to get better is to always be learning something new. Yeah. Always be right. learning something new. That's right. And like we talked about in the, the last thing that we did too, it, you know, it's, it's learning new things and then it's, it's applying those new things. Like don't just keep learning new things and then forgetting the things that you just learned, but find a way to stack on and um, develop you. You know, because the thing is, is I always use like the analogy of Steve I and B.B. King. Like they couldn't be more different in terms of what they do for playing. But that's really not the point. The point is, is that they're both enjoying what they're doing and other people are enjoying what they do or did um, in B.B.'s case. But, you know, that's that's kind of the bottom line. I don't think Steve I ever wakes up every morning and, and goes, man, I wish I was B.B. King. And I'm sure B.B. King didn't wake up every day going, man, I wish I was Steve I. They just find their own path and figure out how to enjoy what it is that they do. And so often we spend all of our time trying to figure out how we can be like somebody else as opposed to figuring out who we are, oh. what we're good at. Like, what, what, is your, what are your strengths? You know, if your strengths are singing and, and writing and strumming, then why should you be worrying about waking up every day, worrying about how fast your sweeps are, you know, or vice versa. If you're, a, if you're a highly technical player and your job really isn't to sing or to write songs, your job is to whatever. Again, you know, I'm not trying to pigeonhole anybody. I'm just saying, you know, that's, you start figuring out who you are and that way you can kind of spend the rest of your life trying to kind of better that, that path that you're on. Mm -hmm. I think understanding who you, you, you always talk about this, Dave, it's like figuring out who you are as a guitar player, where you live, what your instrument is, what your skill set is, what your current talent is, what your goal is. Like, what are you trying to do? Are you just trying to learn a few songs? Or are you trying to like become a professional musician? Like what, what are you trying to do? And then get real comfortable with, um, just pursuing that one goal, but understand that regardless of whether you just want to be a back porch strummer or whether you're trying to be a professional musician in no matter which level you're trying to strive for, it's going to take some effort. It's, I, I always get nervous when I hear people are not nervous, but I'm just like, when people will say, well, I'm just not any good. And my next question is, well, how much effort are you putting into getting better? <laughs> Well, it's something that I think I, I really thought about last summer here in Fargo. Um, you'll see, you'll, you'll go to these, whatever they're called, like side street events where there'll be, you know, a, a, a person playing and singing or two people playing and singing. And then like there'll be a market where people are selling clothes and hot sauces and coffee yep. and God knows what, right? Whenever you go to those things, you always... Uh, not always. Again, I don't mean to pigeonhole, but oftentimes you'll see a guitar player or a couple of guitar players that sing or whatever, and people are enjoying it. Like people are all sitting around and, and I always think to myself, like they may not spend 15 hours a day practicing 
whatever technique or whatever element. They found their niche. This is what they enjoy doing and people enjoy, they're enjoying what they're doing and people are, are enjoying what they're doing. And again, that fits that criteria. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not what I want to do. I want to do other things. And that's okay that we're not doing the same thing, but there I am at the marketplace enjoying what they're doing, yeah. right? So that's kind of the fun part for me is, is that people forget that you don't have to be, there's already an Eddie Van Halen. Right. There's already a Pliny. There's already a Tobin Abbasi. There's already, there's already all these amazing guitar players. You can't be them no matter what you do. You can't be Joe Bonamassa. You can't be Eric Clapton, but you can be you. And you can have elements of all those players if you choose to, but you don't need to be them. They're already there. So you can't walk in their shoes. You don't know what their history was like. You didn't spend the time practicing that they spent. You got to figure out where you need to go. And that marketplace performer is just as important as anybody else. And they're doing what they want to do. So I don't know. It was just, it was kind of a, an epiphany for me watching my wife and I and my daughter were at one of these things last summer. And I just thought it was cool because you know, it wasn't about all these other things that guitar is about for me. That wasn't what they were doing, but I appreciated what they were doing and I enjoyed listening to them. And um, there, I have a lot of students out there that could be doing exactly what they were doing and enjoy themselves if they'd stop feeling so bad, you know, and I, I suck and I can't do this. And again, I, I digress, it's getting too long, but um, you just, you gotta find your place and be happy with it and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking about the fact that I happened, you mentioned Eric Clapton. My sister actually took me to see him two times in Memphis, Tennessee when I was young, young teenager. And I'll just say for everybody out there, while we still have him with us, please, if you get a chance, go see Eric Clapton. And I don't care what the tickets cost. <laughs> it is so yeah, worth gosh, it. I, I haven't seen him go do any, I haven't seen him do any shows in a long time other than specialty events. But yeah. again, that's, yeah. If if you ever get a chance, yeah, I'll just tell you his recordings pale in comparison to seeing the guy play live. He's just phenomenal, and the other musicians that are on stage with him are also insane. Yeah. Um, okay, so guys, thank you for being here. I think that's probably enough for today. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a great little idea of again another topic of of practice that I think would be beneficial. So. Yeah, I do too. So guys, today, uh, of this event uh, that we're doing here for you, the Acoustic Guitar Workshop is going to be available on the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notifications button so you can get notified of when we're going to be doing the next one. We're going to be doing a series for these, a uh, series of these Acoustic Guitar Workshops for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you uh, enjoyed this, please like it, comment, share it. Uh, that'd be awesome. And if you want to do a deep dive and really learn your acoustic guitar and really learn to be able to do some of these things that uh, C's laid out for you in this session, check out Acoustic Guitar, the new course by Steve Stein at guitarzoom.com. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you all for being here. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Okay, buddy. Bye.